Good morning, folks. Got to give a shout out to Phoenix as they absolutely represented yesterday at the event. Completely awesome. We're starting with a small CME from a departing active region. You'll see a bright surge followed by a dark stream shooting out and up. This was a minor CME and it is going completely north of Earth. The massive plasma filament structure on the northeastern limb destabilized and released yesterday. I'm actually trying to come back this morning. But in the process, it gave us our first real CME in days. A perfect vortex of plasma entering the heliosphere. Ooh yen candidate, anyone? We're also watching one plasma filament turn away from an Earth-facing position, holding on, while another one turns to directly face Earth soon. This one is thinner, but also relatively long and presents one of the top eruption threats today. We had no major solar flares, but the sunspots are still worth a peek. We've got a bunch departing the disk and that same one coming in on the south. The departing groups are actually appearing to gain complexity pretty quickly. A lot of magnetic mixing going on in each of these, but they are indeed leaving our view and remaining quiet. Meanwhile, what was a purely negative umbral core group behind them now has a glimmer of hope for flaring as positivity intrudes at the 6 o'clock position. Solar wind remained relatively stable over the last day. No major coronal hole stream effect and Earth's magnetic shield is calm, cool, and collected. The southern negative corona hole is about to be Earth-facing this week. You can see it as the dark patch coming in behind the plasma filaments. It's got some solid force behind the equatorial lead. Another quake uptick could be in order the next few days, and Earth is about to enter a negative magnetic influence while the solar wind from the previous positive corona hole could arrive at any moment. Southern coastline of Mexico and Central America is undergoing a moderate swarm of seismicity. Also took one way up in the Arctic Circle, and we had two mid-ocean rumbles, one an Earth spot quake. I've linked a letter from Dr. Christie and Dr. Spencer, as top-notch as you get, on why 2014 was not the hottest year ever, and they didn't even mention the urban heat island effect. I recommend it. We're also seeing a continued below average marks of ice in the Arctic. Only two winter seasons on record have lower ice extents. Meanwhile, there are no southern summer seasons that have ever seen this much ice in Antarctica. The high ice records are being obliterated. So we've called out an Uyen candidate and an earth spot quake. Cyclone, officially named in the Indian Ocean within hours of that helical CME release, and the earthquake we took close by on the Indian Ridge is almost dead on the expected track of that storm. Giggity. In the Americas, we see the flows here, moisture out of the west, convergence in the east due to the north central high, and a massive one just offshore in the Atlantic. More than half the total population on the map area has a reason to monitor their local weather tonight. In Europe, we've seen a storm take out power to more than 100,000 people in Norway. That same flow that has existed for days continues pulling moisture over from the Atlantic and wrapping up around the lows. A new low in convergence is building to the south as well. 24 hours of precipitation show those areas as getting it the worst. Tonight should not be much different. Down under, low to the northeast still draws its convergence back to the northern peninsulas of Australia while air masses find a meeting ground to the south of them as well. Precipitable water and all. Here's your thunderstorm warnings for the night. Got your current conditions and shots of our star to close at 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, 4.20 a.m. Local. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.